Hello there and welcome to this video where we are going to be looking at work plans as part of OCR iMedia GCSE. So in this video we're going to be looking at work plans are and what needs to go into them, how can you create them and then reviewing work plans. So work plans are essentially, as it says on the team, a plan of how you're going to get some work done, a plan of how you're going to be doing something, for example a project. Um, there are seven main pieces of information that need to go into a work plan. The first two are tasks and activities. The task is the big picture, the big thing that you need to accomplish. So for example, a task could be passing uh, your first unit's exam. The activities are what build up to completing that task. So for example, revision, going through these fantastic YouTube videos, going over your notes and creating some examples and answering mock exam questions. Workflow shows how everything progresses from one to the next to the next and you can see that clearer on the following slides coming up. Uh, time scales, how long you're going to take, take to be doing things. Uh, resources, what are you going to be needing in place to be able to get the pieces of work done. Uh, milestones, which are major achievements of you progressing through things. And contingencies, which are sort of like backup plans. So here you can see um, a simple work plan here and I've got the activities on it, the durations and the resources. So I can see from here what the different activities are. I can see how long they're going to take me, I can see what resources are needed, I can see how much total time is going to be taken to do this. If we're thinking back to this idea here though, we're not really seeing much of the workflow of ha how things are happening and the timescales. When you do that, you can only, with this example, see it when you read through everything. Whereas if you look at this example here, you can clearly see there's a flow of everything that's happening, everything which is being used. Um, in there, but with this work plan, you don't see the resources. So straight away, we've got an idea of having this sort of work plan here is very written, very prescribed. This one is a bit more visual, a bit more easier to look at. So we've got these two examples of work plans here. Then we've got a third example, and this is called a Gantt chart. Uh, Gantt charts are fantastic things because they bring every. So you can see here that you can see with the blue lines, you can see the flow of everything going together. You can see the timings, both the total duration on the on the table on the left hand side, the start dates and finish dates, but also at the top of the chart you can see the months of the year for things going along. You can see here how the milestone tasks, you can see which are represented by the little diamonds. With this it's a nice way of putting everything together in a nice graphical way which for me personally takes the good points from this example, the good points from this example, puts them into one fantastic big example like that. So we've got we, this work plan here and this work plan here can combine into a Gantt chart which is the best of both worlds. So we've looked at um, in this video here what are work plans, what needs to go into them, how can we uh, create and work and we've looked at reviewing them because you need to make sure that we take a combination of example one, example two, put it into a Gantt chart. Gantt charts are most efficient and they're also used most commonly in industry as well. I hope this video has been helpful for you. Feel free to ask any questions below and I shall see you in a future video. Goodbye.